Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to import data into Cosmos DB from an existing data source. Now, what does this motorcycle in the background have to do with Cosmos DB? Absolutely nothing. Do I own this motorcycle? No, I don't. But that's beside the point. Let's get started. And now we're on my laptop, and step one is to get the migration tool. So I'll put the URL in the video notes, but scroll down to the installation section, and one option is to download a pre-compiled binary. Once you do that, it'll be a zip file. And just uncompress that to a folder somewhere, and you're going to be running the dtui.exe. Once you run that, you're going to be put into the tool here. And this first page, before you go next, is kind of helpful, because if you want to dive into some of these advanced uh, options on the migration tool, it's helpful to click this link here, and it's going to bring you to the online documentation. So here's our source information. I'll, I'll click on this box, and you'll see all the different formats, including straight JSON files, MongoDB, etc. For this demonstration, we're going to use SQL Server. It's a local SQL Server on my desktop. And this is a mocked up connection string. I'll put that in the video notes too, so you don't have to go looking for that. You can use either trusted connection here, so I don't have to re-enter my password, or SQL authentication. So either Windows authentication or SQL authentication. And then this is the SQL statement. So let's go look at our data in SQL Server before we go any further. So here we are in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to go ahead and run this SQL statement here, highlight it, and press F5. There's my results. Uh, I got some sample data there. So this is the data that we're going to be uh, that we're going to import into Cosmos database. Now each one of these records in our table here will be uh, created as a document in Cosmos DB, as you would expect. So let's jump back over to our tool here, data migration tool, and there's that same statement there. So give me just a second, and I'm going to change the connection string to the actual one, and then we'll go to the next page. Here we are on the next page, and just leave this export to as the default option here for bulk import. Here's my connection string. Now, I need to help you out most likely on how to assemble this string. You're going to do this by getting three elements, the account endpoint, the key, and the database name. So the way you do that, let's go back out to my Edge browser here. Here we are in Azure, and go, and I'm within my actual Cosmos DB account. Go down to your keys here, and two things you're going to need to copy and paste into a notepad somewhere that you can uh, put together a string. Get your primary connection string right here. You just click this over here to copy it. And then also the primary key right here. And then of course you'll need your database name. Okay, I've mocked this up. Of course it's not the actual connection string, but this is what you're gonna need to assemble. The account endpoint equals, and then a semicolon with the account key, the account key that you copied from the previous step, semicolon, and then the name of the database. My database is called import. Okay, so I've pasted the connection string here, and let's go ahead and verify that. Everything looks good. Now, here's where you're gonna pick an existing collection or a new one. I'm just gonna type one called imported data, and that is new, so it will it doesn't exist, so it'll in, uh, create it for us. You can actually, if you click this, uh, hover over this uh, question mark here, you can give it uh, some wild cards here, like data, open bracket, zero to two. Then it's going to spread it across uh, multiple con collections based on that naming convention. But for right now, we'll just uh, pick one. Partition key is very important when you're going to be doing a lot of data and your performance will be based on uh, picking a very good partition key. And there's some advanced options we uh, won't go into for, th for this video, but you can do things like disable auto ID generation to help with performance as well as uh, update records versus just inserting. But let's go ahead and click next. You'll give your log file location uh, for any kind of error logs and then how much detail you want on those. So let's click next. We're gonna be presented with a summary, everything that's about to happen. Click import and if all goes well, we should see transferred equaling four up here, which we do. So then the next logical step would be to go look at the data in Cosmos DB. So back out to Azure, uh, we were looking at our keys earlier. Now we want to look at the data. So go to Data Explorer right here. 
and we're presented with our databases and collections. So here's the database that we picked, import, and here's the collection called imported data. So if we open this, we'll see our documents here, click that, and then we should see the data that was in SQL Server. So here's one document here. You can see Ernest Shackleton, profile ID one. Here's Rich Branson of two, Robert Scott three, and then uh, Roald Amundsen. I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, number four here. So anything with an underscore, those would be uh, including the ID fields, uh, system of related fields that are added. This is our original data right here. So that's how uh, quickly you can import data or update data in Cosmos database. Now let me show you one other option. Okay, so we're gonna import those same four records, but we're gonna reform our SQL to do it a little bit differently. So what you need to do is click new import right here, but when it prompts you for this, go ahead and say no, because that way it, it leaves all the settings in place that we uh, just set up. So we're back to the source information here, and what we're gonna do is change this SQL. So let's go back to SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, and we're pulling the exact same data from the table, but we're doing something a little bit differently. In this first one, we had pulled the first name and the last name uh, just as it is and, and use these column names, but we're gonna now rename these. This is just an alias that um, you're probably familiar with. Instead of my results being first name, it's gonna be name dot first name, name dot last name. So let's see what happens when we run that. So the data looks exactly the same, but now we have different names here. So what we can do is actually use this dot notation We'll use these to create hierarchical relationships or sub documents. So let's take that same SQL, go over to our migration tool and replace it with that. Now what's important down here, minimize this, is the nesting operator. Remember our column names now have a dot notation like name.firstname, name.lastname. If we put a period down here, and that's gonna take care of um, what we need it to do to break those out into those hierarchical relationships. Let me uh, fix up my connection string and go to the next page. Okay, I shouldn't have to change anything here. We're gonna go ahead and use the same collection. Click next, read the summary and import. Once again, if all goes well, transferred should equal four, which it does. All right, now let's go back over to Cosmos database and see what it looks like. Data Explorer here, and we'll refresh this and we should see another four documents and how do they differ? So remember, this is the previous import where all these names, you know, first name, last name uh, were separate. If we now click one of the newer ones here, you can see how it created this sub document or hierarchy here you have name then within name you have first name and last name so that's the different behavior of using the different option here in source information which is the nesting separator so we changed our sql to use aliases and renamed those columns with the dot notation and then we put the period and nesting op, uh, separator here so that's it thanks again for watching and we will talk to you soon